Okay, hello all you people out there, this is Mike of the Two and a Half Stooges, and this is basically an add-on for the old Game Maker NPC tutorial text box thing that I made a couple months ago. Now, it's good and all, uh, people seem to think it's pretty helpful, but there's a couple things that I noticed or other people noticed about it that aren't so great, so I decided I'd just make a separate video dealing with that. So for one thing, most importantly, somebody else pointed this out to me, I really should have, uh, I really should have dealt with this when I was testing the program before I even recorded it in the first place, but as it is, if you're standing like this and you do that, that happens, that shouldn't happen, you're facing the wrong way. Another thing, um, if you're standing like this and hit the talk button, what should probably happen is you, the, uh, the blue thing should turn towards you and it should talk, but that doesn't happen, that's pretty much uh, something that's been come to expected in any game made after like 1970. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but another thing, this is just graphical, but it would be nice if the text would scroll. I actually did a separate tutorial about that on somebody else's website um, for like scrolling text, which is also something that yeah, a lot of, that people have come to expect out of video games. Um, so I should have put that in there. I'll deal with all that in this video. So let's get out of there and let's deal with the most important thing. Why is that label up on my screen? CPU activity. I don't know if that's going to show up in the recording window or not. You never know with those things. But anyway, the problem with facing the wrong way would be when you go into the NPC object and you hit go into the uh, let's get this in the, in the um, on the screen and you go into the space pressed event, which is the talk button. It checks the distance to the player and it makes sure the angle of the player is opposite that of the um, the NPC. This is kind of. I don't know, it's an interesting piece of code because it does in one line what could be done in like 10 lines, but in this case it doesn't actually work and that's a problem. So what you want to do is you don't actually want this, there are multiple ways to do this as with everything in um, programming, but this is what I like to do. So I'm going to get rid of that line and I'm going to add that. So what we have to do is we have to check to make sure that the space in front of the player where it's pointing is the NPC object. So I'm just gonna say uh, xx and yy. I like those variables. They're great position variables because well, x and y are already taken, but uh, xx and yy get the point across pretty well. So we're gonna say xx is defined as... Now I didn't feel like showing myself typing that out because I can't type and talk at the same time very well, but this is gonna be the space in front of the player. So x is going to be uh, the player's x position plus 32 times cosine of um, the player's image angle, which is the direction that the the arrow is pointing, basically, and y is going to be pretty much the same thing except in um, horizontal. So that's going to be the player's y minus 32 times the sine of the player's image angle. This is trigonometry. Um, I'm doing it this way because trigonometry is my favorite math subject or math um, specific branch. And I don't know. I'm sorry if this confuses people. If you don't know trigonometry, um, I suggest at least you get a handle on sine and cosine, and maybe tangent, because you do see that a lot in programming, uh, especially if you're doing graphics. Well, maybe if you're just doing like um, I don't know, Apple and Java, you might not see it. But if you're doing stuff in Game Maker, if you're doing anything more than like the tutorials that used to come packaged within like 8.0, and I think they came back in the uh, studio, then then you're gonna wanna know um, sine and cosine. But this, long story short, is the um, space in front of the player. If you were to draw like a dot or something on the screen in that position, uh, you would see it's pretty much a couple, it's, I believe it's 16 pixels away from the uh, tip of the point of the arrow. Um, the arrow on the sprite in there. But Let's see, what do we have to do with this? It doesn't do anything at the moment, it's just a bunch of variables. So, all of this, the thing with the draw is true and draw is false. Um, we're going to be checking if there's a collision at that position, then, uh, then we're going to all this, and only then. So let's indent this to make it a little more readable, there we go. So if there's a collision at this point, at the space in front of the player, uh, with an NPC object, and um, this is just some extra data, uh, precise, you don't need it because it's a square and uh, not me is going to be false naturally because you're looking to check if it's collecting with you in the first place. Then do all this. And that's all. Oh, also if you want the, th the, um, the player to turn towards the, the NPC to turn towards the player, then you're just going to want to um, change the image angle as well. 
and that's basically just um, on the screen the angle between the um, the NPC and the player. So let's run this. Should work. I've kind of cheated by testing this uh, before recording and copying the code to a notepad file. Let's see. I'm sitting in front of you. That works. I'm standing there. It good. It turns towards you. Um, it does look a little bit odd because uh, it's kind of at an angle. It's not a perfect 90 degree angle with the player, so that does look a little bit strange. Um, if you want to, you can round it off to the nearest 90 degrees or something like that. It doesn't really matter, um, but most importantly, what I came here to fix in the first place is um, I can't stand like this and it's gonna talk, so. Alright, that's fixed. Now moving on. To make it look a little bit better, uh, I am going to reposition the text on the screen for one because it was kind of off-center, honestly, and that bothers me because OCD. Um, which I suspect I have, but I've never been diagnosed, but that's not important. So let's just move that over like 432. Look a little bit better. Give me 10 seconds to test this. That's better. Alright, so to make it scroll. Um, I like this. I was actually surprised at how simple it was to make text scroll on the screen. So all you really need is just give it a separate um, variable, call it t or something for time, because it's pretty much varying with t. And in the draw then, instead of just saying draw text, you're going to say draw text and string copy, and that's going to be a um, pretty much substring in any other computer language. So it's going to be text, the index is going to start at 0, and the count, the number of characters that it draws is going to be t. Now, you're going to say t plus equals 1. And, let's see, t is 0, right? Uh, only thing, we should probably set it to zero every time you, uh, you say draw is true so it doesn't, like, scroll the first time and then do nothing after that. And let's see, get you over here, walk over, and it scrolls, so perfect. Um, that's all I really want you to do here. To be a little bit more efficient, you may notice that the, uh, the bounds on T is limitless, so it's going to increment no matter what, even if you're past the end of the string. And if you want to be, like, ultra memory management good, um, I don't know, if you leave your game running for like n 9 years, and T keeps in incrementing 30 times a second, then it does an integer overflow, you might have a problem. Um, but that's probably not going to happen, but just in case, say, if T is, uh, only, only if T is less than string length of, uh, text, then do that. Alright, so, it'll have the same outcome, but T will only, uh, ever be as long as the string that it's drawing, so, um, a little bit more efficient. Uh, anything else? I guess sometimes you might want to have, um, say, a set of text, uh, like, I don't know, an NPC has, like, two lines instead of one, and, uh, you switch between them, like, in Earthbound or Pokemon or something, or if they have more text than you can fit in the box, then you're gonna have that set in, uh, multiple things. So to do that, I'm just gonna say, uh, <clears throat> just gonna change this to an array. Oops, not uh, I. Zero and text of uh, one equals. Um, this is another sentence. I think I spelled that right. And then say so you can keep going. I don't really care. So that's just that's just gonna be an array of text. Um, I think that came out of my mouth jumbled, but whatever. And now, so that it knows which index in the array to draw, we're just going to say, I don't know, uh, line, I, what is that, line equals zero, and now in the draw event, uh, <clears throat> we're going to tell it to draw specifically text of line, and then any time you hit the space bar, uh, else if... Oh, I don't know. Line is less than the total lines. There isn't a variable for that yet, but I'll make it now. So total lines uh, pretty much tells you how many m. Um, that should go in wherever you set the uh, this code. So you can put this in the create event of the object too. But if you want to have like more than one NPC with different uh, different dialogue, then you want to put it in the creation code. So like this. Total lines is what, two there? I don't care, you might get an empty, um, <clears throat> an empty text box in the last move, but I don't really care. So, we're going to say, <clears throat> I don't need to click on that. 
Uh, if line is total lines, then um, we're going to say, we're going to cut that instead of deleting it, uh, line plus equals 1, and um, t equals 0, so that it starts over. And then, we're going to uh, do that. Alright, let's see. Did I get that all? I'm going to want to say line equals uh, 0 the first time you hit the space bar, so it resets every time. Let's see. Walking over you do. This is a sentence. Total lines is either spelled incorrectly or something like that. Oh. Misspelled it. I hate it when I misspell variables and have to restart the program. It's a pain in the butt. But. Alright, this is a sentence. This is another sentence. I misspelled that naturally. And um, there's an empty text box. So, that's pretty simple. Um, if you want to do even more kinds of things, like change the text or, uh, I don't know, have in inline formatting or something with like, I don't know, you can do that. I'll make a tutorial on that unless a lot of people want me to, but you can have a lot of fun with this sort of thing. Um, you can have like as many NPCs as you want. So, I don't know, with you, text. So just say you have that guy, you have multiple NPCs, uh, and then you can walk up to you and he'll talk. Yeah, I like a hungry canyon joke on the wall, don't ask. Uh, um, any other notes? I don't know, say if the NPC is way close to the bottom of the screen and when you talk, uh, the text box might obscure the, um, the character a little bit. You can tell the game to draw either at the top of the screen or at the bottom so that it doesn't ever cover anything up important like that. Um, yeah. Anything else? I don't really think so. Um, if you really want to get fancy, you can like draw an arrow from the text box to the uh, NPC that's talking in case there's like, I don't know, you're programming a cutscene with like five NPCs and you want to know which one's talking without having like um, the scripting dialogue things like player one said this and player two said no this and uh, you can do that if you want to. It's rather interesting. That's a little more complicated. That involves more complicated trigonometry and stuff. But yeah, that's all for here. Um, if you want to bother me about making any more Game Maker tutorials, um, you can do that. Uh, if you want to, say, work with me on a Game Maker tutorial, you can probably do that too and um, PM me for my Skype name. But yeah, for now, I hope you all enjoyed that. Rate, comment, subscribe, watch some other stuff I've uploaded, and I will see you later.